Okay, so 3.2 sales journal, it's on page 430. The great news about this, you guys, is because we spent a lot of time talking about the purchase journal, we can breeze right through the sales journal because it's exactly the same. It's just used to inc um, record everything that is including involving a sale. So for each credit sale, a source document called the sales invoice is prepared. This document, commonly called a bill, is the seller's evidence that a transaction has occurred. The sale invoice was prepared by Pan Canadian Sports Equipment. So it has your invoice here, shows how many you bought, what you bought, what was the price, what was the taxes. Okay, there's four copies usually. One is the customer's copy, one is going to the accounting department of Pan Canadian, one's going to the accounts receivable clerk Pan, in Pan Canadian, and one's going to the shipping clerk in Pan Canadian. So sales journal, you can see it looks almost exactly like the purchase journal, but it has sales journal up there. Everything's done exactly the same way. You put the people in that you are, that are your customers. You are separating between the accounts receivable, the sales, and the HST. And you're making sure down here that your debits equal your credits. The single underline here shows that you're adding the double underline here shows that your debits equal your credits from here. This 110, 400, and 206 are showing that you're posting those to those columns. The so accounts receivable debit, the sales credit, and the HST payable credit. Okay, balancing, I already talked to you about that, just like it is with the purchase journal. Posting, talk to you about that as well. If you want to look to see at each day and at the end of the month you do here, go right ahead. Recording credit invoices, same thing as we talked about with the purchase. I don't know if I need to really go over that with you. Um, talks about if you're going to use the circling method or not. Okay, so this is an example of the circle method. And a statement of account. Suppose a company has a customer by the name of J. Clark and another name J. Clark, but it's spelled differently. A sale of 100 to J. Clark was incorrectly posted to the other J. Clark's account. In the seller's account receivable ledger, J. Clark's account balance would be $100 too low, and the other J. Clark's account would be too high. How would this error be discovered? To locate errors of this type, many companies send a statement of account to their customers. At regular periods, usually every month, a copy of the debits and the credits in a customer's account is mailed to the customer. In effect, a copy of the entries made to the ledger account since the last statement is sent to the customer. The statement of account serves two purposes. It enables the customer to compare his or her records with those of the seller and find if there's any error. It also reminds the customer of what they owe you. Okay, so here would be a, a, an example of a customer's account. There was a previous balance, plus they purchased some envelopes, and that is now what they owe. There's something called cycle billing. Um, if your company is too large, you can't possibly get through everybody at once at the end of the month. So what they do is they split it up alphabetically, and some transact, some people will the 14th, the 21st, or the 30th, or any other arrangements set up like that. Just allows the work to be uh, separated throughout the month and not be quite so overwhelming at month's end. And then there's just an, a summary of what we've just finished talking about. So as you can see, quite a bit the same as your purchase journal. <laughs>